Welcome to Church Online at The Bridge. We are so happy that you decided to join us in church today, especially as we continue to navigate these unprecedented and uncertain times of the COVID-19 virus. Here at The Bridge Church, we exist to do whatever it takes to connect Central Jersey with the love of Jesus. And we do that through connecting people to God, each other, and their purpose. In this service, we're gonna have a few songs to encourage your faith, a relevant message, and lots of opportunities to get and stay plugged into community during the week. Here's the thing, the church is not a building. The church is you and me. So whether you're watching in your living room, your kitchen, or on your phone, God is ready to meet with you. So let's press into that truth as we sing and lean into what God is doing in this season. Thanks again for choosing to be here with us online. Rejoicing, we're breaking silence. You are my God alone. Time to stand on your word with passion. Heaven's our own, and I can't stop giving you praise. Your fame will last forever, and I won't stop living for your name, declaring your praise. You're my victory, reason why I sing everything I need. There's no other name that deserves all praise. You're my victory, Jesus. My life transformed in your holy presence. Even to your call alone My shame is buried I live in freedom My God has won Oh, and I can't stop giving you praise Your fame will last forever And I won't stop living For your name Declaring your praise Cause you're my victory and why I see everything I need There's no other name that deserves all praise You're my victory Cause you're my victory Reason why I sing everything I need There's no other name that deserves all praise You're my victory Jesus You're my victory You're my victory There's nothing I want more To see you high and lifted up There's nothing more powerful your name, your name, there's nothing I want more. To see you high and lifted up, there's nothing more powerful. And your name, your name, cause you're my victory, reason why I sing everything I need. There's no other name that deserves our praise. You're my victory. Cause you're my victory. Reason why I sing everything I need. Cause there's no other name that deserves our praise. You're my victory. There's nothing I want more. To see you high and lifted up, there's nothing more powerful than your name, your name. There's nothing I want more. To 
I see you high and lifted up. There's nothing more powerful than your name, than your name.
see my Savior With love in His eyes His body broken No sin to hide I see my Jesus Eyes blind with blood His face is crimson His cry is love It's no wonder we call you it's no wonder we sing your praise Jesus our hope forever You made a way You made a way see redemption ravage the grave the triumph of heaven is Christ Jesus our King it's no wonder we call you say
Have you ever noticed how in times of uncertainty, God has a way of getting our attention? When seem th- things seem to be out of control, it's, it's just natural for us to look up. The interesting thing is when things are going good, when the economy's strong and our health's okay and our relationships are what we want them to be, we don't normally look up. If anything, we find ourselves looking around. We see what he has or what she has or what they have. But when things get difficult, when tragedy strikes, whether we're Christians or not, it's in those times that we find ourselves looking up. We all have a story of this. I think back 20 years ago as Michelle and I were preparing to go to the Philippines to do missions work and we were in a meeting with some pastors up in Boston, Massachusetts. And I can remember in the middle of that meeting, one of the pastors came in from the back of the auditorium and he stopped things and he said, guys, we need to pray. And what we found out on that morning, September 11, 2001, was that our nation was under attack. Our world was forever changed and we were all filled with uncertainty. I can remember that afternoon as we made our way back to Michelle's hometown of Fall River, Massachusetts. And we stopped by the church she grew up attending. And and we went inside and we spent time just praying, asking God to help all of the people that were hurting at that moment. And you know, we weren't the only ones to do that. In fact, that following Sunday, there was a 25% increase across America in church attendance. Because when things are uncertain, in times of uncertainty, it's what we do. Ten years later, another moment of uncertainty struck when Flight 1549 flying out of LaGuardia Airport in New York City made contact with a flock of geese and lost all engine power. It was at that time that the pilot, Captain Sully, had to make a decision on what he was going to do. And and he came to the decision of, of dumping the plane into the Hudson River. I can only imagine the emotion that the people must have felt in the cockpit at that moment. What was it like as, as, as the plane was descending? One of the flight attendants describes those final moments as they were descending down to make their crash landing into the Hudson. She says that it was eerie. It was even ominous as it was silent. What were people doing? They were praying. Because in times of uncertainty, It's what we do. Today we face uncertainty like we've never known it before. And in the midst of this, we find ourselves looking up. And a question that we're all asking is this. God, do you still have the whole world in your hands? As we encounter this health crisis where thousands of people are losing their lives, as we see record job losses in a, an economy that's sputtering and 401ks that are plummeting, our natural reaction as we go through all of this is, is to look up and say, God, do you still have the world in your hands? And one of the greatest things we can do in these times is to pick this up, the Bible, Because it's in times of uncertainty that this is incredibly relevant. When it comes to the Bible, the Bible is a record of God's faithfulness in uncertain times. And as you read the stories of the Bible, you see that God was faithful to the faithless. He was faithful to the faithful. In every story, God was right there. And, and, and as you read through that, it reminds us that he still has the whole world in his hands. And one of the things that I love about the scriptures is that it's full of, of messy stories of imperfect people. And, and their uncertain circumstances. And, and what we see time and time again is that God was working. He was active. He was right there. I think of the story of Joseph. Not Joseph and Mary, another Joseph who lived about 1,500 years before the time of Jesus. He was an incredible young man who had outstanding character. 
And, and it was because of this integrity that he had and, and this special character that was in him that his brothers grew to hate him and become jealous of him, finally to the point where one day they threw him into a pit. And as he's down in this pit, this is the conversation that he hears. Should we kill him or should we sell him? Imagine the uncertainty that Joseph must have felt as he heard those words. God, where are you? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? A little later in his life, he's faced with this enormous temptation. And, and, and he's in this position of power. And, and, and yet all of a sudden, because he does the right thing, he's falsely accused and he finds himself in prison left to rot and I'm sure just like you and just like me as he was facing those uncertain times he must have been crying out and saying God where are you in all of this but what you read as you understand what transpires in his life is that God was always there he was always working he was always present or how about the story of Jochebed? Jochebed's a, a name that you might not be familiar with, but she's the mother of Moses. And here she is, she's a brand new mom, she's got this little baby boy, and she finds herself in the middle of unsurmountable circumstances. You see, at this time, there's too many Israelites in the nation of Egypt, and the, the Pharaoh, the king at the time, he becomes fearful of an uprising, and so he decides that all the Israelite babies should be destroyed. Imagine how Jochebed must have felt as she, she has to make this, this horrible choice. Should she leave her son to the butchers of Pharaoh or to the crocodiles of the Nile? Imagine that moment as she watched her son float down the river out of her love and protection. She must have felt and thought, God, where are you? How, how could you let this happen to my baby boy? I don't want anything to happen to him. I don't want anything to hurt him. God, are you still in control? Well, that little boy goes on to become a great leader. And one day he delivers the people of Israel. And then there's the story of Rahab, the harlot, she was a prostitute. And her story is radically different from Joseph and Jochebed because while they were faithful to God, she was faithless. In fact, she would have been guilty of breaking every one of the ceremonial laws of the Jews. But she too found herself facing uncertainty. As she watched out her window and she saw that, that her city of Jericho was being surrounded by the army of the Israelites and she knew death and destruction was coming. Her very family that was there with her, they would lose their lives. Imagine what she must have felt in that moment. God, where are you? And what you discover through her story is that God was right there with her because Rahab ends up becoming the great, great grandmother of the most famous king of Israel, King David. When you read about King David, so much is told about his life and the uncertainties that he faced, so many fears that he had to deal with, so many enemies that he went up against. But perhaps one of the things you haven't heard a lot about is David's children. Well, David's favorite son, Absalom, he turned on his father. He ends up leading a revolt to take the throne away from David. Imagine the emotion that David must have felt as, as he realizes that his son wants him dead. And so he flees to Jerusalem and the palace. But even here in the midst of all of this turmoil, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, God was right there. He had David's whole world in his hands. 
Because you discover that David becomes the great, 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 25 great Slater, grandfather of a teenage girl named Mary. Yes, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the one who the angel Gabriel appeared to and said, blessed are you above all women. The the woman that God had chosen to give birth to the promised one, the Messiah. But Mary faced some of the most uncertain times and circumstances. As her and her husband-to-be Joseph made their way to Bethlehem as they arrived, and she's about to give birth, she finds out that there's no place for them to even be. And so where do they find themselves? They find themselves in a stable. And as that young mother lays her child in this manger, imagine what she must have been thinking about at that moment. Is this really what you had in mind, God? She looks over at the manger and sees it holding the Messiah. And as you read the rest of the story, you find that God was right there with her. This child would become not the deliverer of Israel, but he would become the savior of the entire world. Today, we face unprecedented times, uncertainty all around us. And the most important thing that we can do in moments like these is to pick this up and to read story after story of God's faithfulness because the Bible is a record of God's faithfulness in uncertain times. And know this, when life is uncertain, God is not. He still got the whole world in his hands. He still has your world in his hands. And as you think about that, in the midst of your uncertainty, consider this question. Is it possible that God is still active, still accomplishing his purposes when there seems to be no indication of his activity? Is it possible that he's still working even when you don't see it or you don't feel it or or, or you're not certain of it? See, some of you might be thinking right now, I I appreciate what you're saying, Ron, and this is kind of what I expected you to say was some encouraging words, but but how is this going to help me in my current situation? I mean, is this going to get my job back or is this going to fix the health crisis or is this going to help my 401k? And, And I understand this. That's a fair pushback you give. It's an honest reaction to this situation. But the reality is it will not fix those things. But if you're willing to pick this up, and read the stories, and remember, he still got the whole world in his hands, it will allow you to embrace uncertainty with the certainty that God is in control. It will allow you to to know that you can take that next step into uncertainty you can face tomorrow. It will allow you to maintain hope and faith even in the meantime, regardless of what uncertainties you might face in the future. And that you don't have to abandon hope. No matter how out of control the world might seem, you know that he's still got it. And it will allow you to go to bed at night with the confidence that God has not abandoned you, regardless of what you might be up against. It'll allow you to to rest, to take a, a deep breath, and know that God still has the whole world in his hands. It will motivate you to be on the lookout for his grace and intervention. And see what happens as we, as we recognize that God's still at work. We start to see the places that he is working. Even the little things, we notice those little God winks that remind us that God has the whole world in his hands. 
And knowing this will keep you from making decisions that only make things worse. Because let's be honest, in times of uncertainty, our emotions can get all out of sorts. And it's not a time that we make the best decisions. But if we remember that God has the world in his hands, it will protect us against those bad decisions. And ultimately, by answering this question, it will protect you from despair. Yeah, you might wonder, how, how do you know this, Ron? I mean, how can you say that so confidently? And I would say this, the reason I'm so confident is because I've experienced this in my time, in my life, over and over again. So many times over the years, we've felt uncertain about situations. But what we have seen is that God was there. He was faithful. Michelle and I journeyed through uncertainty a few years ago when she was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. At 40 years old, with none of the risk factors whatsoever, as we heard that news, I remember us just like in disbelief. How could this be? How could this happen? And I'll never forget the wave of emotions we felt as we faced the uncertainty of cancer. And I can remember our prayers and our cries to God saying, God, where are you? Are you in this? But what we discovered is that God was incredibly faithful. He was right there with us through every moment, through Michelle's treatment and then her surgery and her recovery. We're reminded, we were reminded that once again, God still has the whole world in his hands. My point is this today. We do face things that we've never seen before. There's so much uncertainty, and to be honest, I don't know what tomorrow holds. But the thing that I do know is that when life is uncertain, God is not. He still got the whole world in his hands, and he still got your world in his hands. And we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. God is active. He is faithful to the faithless and he is faithful to the faithful. God is working in the midst of uncertainty. Now you might be thinking today, Ron, that's encouraging, but what do I do now? Where do I go from here? Let me make two suggestions. The first would be this. Pick this up. Begin to read the stories. Read through the accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as, as they walked with Jesus, as you see the stories unfold. And yes, there were times of uncertainty. Think about after Jesus had been crucified and, and how those uh, disciples must have been so confused so fearful and yet how God proved himself to them that he was faithful you read through the the book of Acts and and it describes what took place in the first century church they faced all sorts of uncertainty but what you discover as you read through those is that God was active he was right there he was faithful he still had the whole world in his hands. The second thing I would encourage you to do is to tune in next week because we are going to get incredibly practical. And we're gonna look at something that I think will be helpful for you and helpful for me in the middle of our uncertainty. I don't know what's around the corner, but I do know that God still has the whole world in his hands. He still has your world in his hands. Father God, we come to you right now. And we recognize 
that you are, are still in control of it all. And my prayer today, God, is that you would make this more real to us than ever before. That we would often think about the faithfulness that we've seen to your people over the years and, and how, how, God, you have never left us and you've never abandoned us. God, I pray that you would just remind us of this and give us peace even when there's so much uncertainty around us. We need you, God, more than ever before, we need you. So please speak this into our lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if this is your first time joining us, I just want to say thank you for tuning in. And I did want to ask you to do something this morning. If you would take a moment to fill out our digital connect card, and you can do that by texting the word connect to the number on the screen. If you'll fill out that digital connect card and send it in, we'll actually make a donation in your name to help the homeless right down in inner city Trenton. Also, I want to encourage those of you who call the Bridge Church your home to uh, continue during this season as much as you're able to be generous. And you can do this by going to our website, uh, bridgechurchnj.org, uh, or by texting the word GIVE to the number on the screen, and it will walk you through the steps. Lastly, I'd like to invite you all to hang out with us for the next 10 or 15 minutes in our virtual lobby. This is a chance for us just to connect. We would love to have some time to chat with you today. Hey, once again, thank you so much for inviting us into your living room. We have been the church here. Now let's be the church out there.